Part 6 Ending of Side Objective, Other Parts Down Below. Now I'm crying again. The love he has shown me just this week as he brought me to this place of correction and pruning has been painful and at times too much to even bear, but necessary. The crazy thing is that the guy that plays bass for me at church looked at me this Sunday and said, you're different. I asked what he meant and he said, something about you is different, you even look different. My eyes got all leaky and then I told him where God had brought me this past week and even confessed my sins to him. He said the transformation is beautiful, and no it was not in the slightest flirty or inappropriate way either. There is a purging happening in me. I just want to be transparent. I am not worried about my reputation for being exposed or any of that either. I just want to please God and do the right thing from here on. My love for STBX has increased even through this. I see him as someone so priceless. I see so much value in him and in who he is. I have such a respect for him now, more than I ever have. I see the love he has had all along for me. I have been honored to be called his wife. He's a keeper. Like I said earlier, there has been such an awakening with me just in the past week. I see things as they are. I see the incredible blessings I had and have been given. I am already grateful that I was able to spend close to 10 years with my STBX. I had the love of a lifetime and it was real. We didn't always have it all together, but together we had it all. No matter what, I am still blessed. P.S. Our 10th anniversary is on the 24th of this month. We had plans to go on a little trip together too. We never had a honeymoon and this trip was going to be our honeymoon and we were renewing our vows too. And I'm crying again. STBX is on his way over to grill dinner outside and hang out with me and the kids for the evening. I cherish these times more than I ever did before when they were the norm. Side note, when STBX and I are together and snuggle on the couch, kiss, and are intimate with each other, I don't feel used by him. He is still my husband in my heart. I still love him tremendously and he says he still loves me too. I think it's natural to miss each other and long to be close. We hold each other sometimes for an hour before anything physical ever happens even. We are still married until at least next July when he can file for divorce as per our state law, should he decide to do so. Anyway, I didn't want him reading any of that thinking I feel like he's using me. Because I don't. Also, I don't want him to feel rushed to have to make a decision right away either. A lot of can change in the next 10 months. I will be patient. I am not going anywhere. If he wants to come over and be close to me one day and then feels differently the next, that is okay too. I understand. I have already been exposed to everyone. I could have kept this whole thing hidden, kept lying and saved my face, but I chose to come clean and have admitted to all that I am the reason we are separated. Even our children know it was me, not him. As far as my lifestyle goes, I'm doing just fine on my own raising six kids by myself. I want my husband though. I want to spend my life with him. I want to love him and be loved by him. I want to grow old with him. When I originally began this confession, I was still in self-pity, selfish, immature, justification mode. A lot has happened within me since then. Yes, God has truly began some serious changes in me. It has been painful to say the least. Coming face to face with my sin and with the pain it has caused is such sickening anguish. I have to let the pain do its work though. Releasing it to God though and surrendering myself, I have begun to see things and see my husband in a different light, a new perspective. I have woken up to reality. My reality is that because of my selfishness and stupidity, I traded real love for a false feeling of validation. It has cost me everything. I now stand to lose him forever because of it. No matter what, I will be okay. I know that. I don't want to spend and share my life with anyone else but him though. I'm not fearful of losing a lifestyle. I'm terrified of losing his love. I know people will say it's cheesy, but we both have always believed we were made for each other. There is a special bond we share that runs very deep. I'm afraid of losing him, not what he provides. I should have taken all of that into account before and I didn't. I hate that I didn't. I am ashamed of myself for being such an idiot. He knows that he is all I've ever wanted. I still want him. I always will. I won't ever give up or lose hope. Six months from now, I will be even stronger. I know I've come so far already and I'm going to keep going. I want to be proud of myself and pleased with the woman I am, the mother I am and the wife I can be. I told God that I will walk through this valley for as long as he requires. I know he is with me, near to me. I know the minute I broke and surrendered, he reached for me. I have that. He is molding me and making me into something beautiful and I'm letting him. I don't ever want to go back to who I was. I know deep within me that I will never be unfaithful again. I know the mantra of once a cheater, always a cheater, but not only is there a righteous fear of God within me now, but I have been scared straight for real. This pain that I have caused my sweetheart and our family and myself is the most unimaginable pain I've ever experienced. Worse than any other traumatic event of my life. I will never hurt him or our family like this ever again. I know I won't. If I'm given the chance, I will honor that gift forever. I was so focused on what he didn't give me that I missed what he was giving me. Like I said, whatever you feed grows. Sure, he could have been more attentive and he knows that. There's no need to harp on any of that. I could have been more of what he needed me to be too. We speak different love languages and there's nothing wrong with that. I've just begun to really really see that this man loved me. I was blind to it because I was looking for it to look a certain way. I love him for him. Flaws and all. 
I accept him for who he is and love him and want to love him even more. The crazy thing is that my love for him is growing even stronger through this. I was passively abusive, yes. I'm not a nagging type or unkind with words, and was sweet more often than not, but the resentment was there for sure. I hid it well. It grew too. I fed it. I felt sorry for myself. I felt like I was the only one keeping the marriage alive and when he rejected me, it hurt and made me angry. Resentment was a big issue. This actually is something my therapist and I have worked on. I did not cheat to get back at him at all though. It wasn't like that. Now the lying and deception was totally abusive. Guilty as charged, watching him suffer with mental anguish. Abusive. The thing is, the more inward I reflect and the more light bulb moments I have, the more truth I accept, transparent I become, and the more I grow, the more I want to fight for my marriage. I literally would do anything to be able to go back and change things. I know it's his decision and all I can do is work on me and pray like I've never prayed before. I know there is much work to do and that the road back is not easy. If he is willing to walk that road with me, I will hold his hand ever so tightly and never let go. If he is not, I will accept that as his choice and hope that one day we will once again find our way back to each other. He was incessantly accusing me of sleeping with the other guy. I had not and I did not. I never had slept with anyone other than my husband. I never kissed anyone other than my husband. That being said, he kept saying he didn't believe me. I told him over the phone the furthest it ever went. Then he asked me to type up something with every detail of the infidelity. He said, today is your day of reconciliation and if you give me the truth, you have my word that we will get back together. I knew he could polygraph me and I also wanted to come totally clean and make things right and to give him answers he needed, so I told him everything in detail. I knew he was a keeper of his word and I wanted to do the right thing with full disclosure. I wasn't too worried about anyone knowing the truth, but the detailed timeline was for my husband and it was between us, not for the whole world wide web to see and dissect. So, when I saw he had posted it publicly for the world to see, it did hurt. He didn't keep his word because he said he didn't believe my timeline, although it is 100% accurate. I have begged to be polygraphed, but he refuses. What I did do is terrible and wrong and inappropriate and hurtful, and I hate that I did it, but I will not and cannot ever confess to something that never happened. I love my husband. He has asked me today to not include him in the picture of my future. My heart is beyond saddened, but it is his choice. Nothing hurts more. Nothing. I had a terrible night last night. Actually, I showed up to IC very upset and left with some things to consider and then last night once the kids were in bed, I crumbled. I was really hurting. The pictures were posted because I am not afraid of being found out like others keep saying I am. Or I'm more worried about my reputation, etc. I'm not. It's not about that. I removed them because Ella was right and it was a rash move. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. It's between me and God. I just saw STBX for a money exchange for a bill. I got back in my car and felt my eyes filling up with tears as I watched him drive away. God has seriously dealt with me. I am making changes and getting well. My focus is on becoming a woman of integrity and caring for our kids. STBX will choose whatever he wants. I will accept that and be fine. All things work together for good for those who love him. My trust isn't in STBX. My trust is in the Lord. My hope is in the Lord. I love my husband enough to let him go. I am still of value. Maybe not to STBX, but my worth doesn't come from him. My past does not dictate my future. I can't keep going in circles here because it's not helping anyone. God knows our hearts, mine and my husband's, and right now, those are the only two in our situation that matter, aside from our sweet babies. My focus is on not just getting well but being well and loving my family. I trust God with our lives knowing he is good and that no matter what, he has me and is for me. He makes beautiful things out of dust. He gives beauty for ashes. He restores. He mends. He redeems. He heals. He forgives. He renews our minds and sets a right spirit within us. My hope is in the Lord. I have faith that God will remain true to his promises and to the promise he spoke to me concerning my family. Now, I'm going to go back to sleep. Well, try to at least while sandwiched between our 8-year-old and our 6-year-old. I am in therapy and have been for 10 weeks now. My therapist is fantastic and just told me Wednesday that he is seeing me grow so fast and I'll just tell you that Wednesday was a very emotional and tough session. He too is a Christian and gives me sound psychological advice as well as advice from a godly perspective. For now, my focus is on me becoming whole and complete with or without my husband in the picture. I am getting there a little more every day too. Should my husband decide to save our marriage, he will be getting a much healthier version of the woman he loves. One that fully honors him in every way. Should he decide to sever our tie forever, I will walk away knowing that I was made stronger and that I did all that I could to make things right for my marriage and my family and that I will be okay. The love my husband still has for me even now is the most amazing gift as it is. It is real love. Nobody could ever tell me differently. I hold that in my heart every day. At the end of the day, I know I am loved. I love myself and I am proud of myself for the changes I'm making and the woman I am becoming. God loves me and is making a miracle out of me. My children love me and even though they know I have failed our family they still think I hung the moon and my husband still loves me even now. I am blessed beyond measure. Mercy has already saved me. 
I am humbled and grateful for that. I think I've probably shared this on here before, but ever since I can ever remember, I have felt unloved. Even as a very young child, I felt like a disappointment and would try even harder to please. So fully accepting the love from the Lord has been surface only. Knowing he loved me, but not truly receiving his love. I didn't feel I deserved it. Not anymore. His love alone is what is carrying me right now and is leading me into the next season. It's very strange, but even though I have lost family, STBX's family, and even though my STBX does not live at home, I have never felt more loved. It's not the love from people I was craving. I needed to accept the love of God for myself. A gaping hole I had needed to fill by only him. It could only be satisfied by him. He is making me whole. I still miss my STBX tremendously, but I'm okay and will be okay. And when you have a true encounter with the Lord and allow him to wreck your heart, you lay down the style and long for substance and not just an acknowledgement of God, but a living relationship with him. I have been raised in a godly home and have known God and believed in him, but not until now have I honestly sought him with my whole heart. If God used this horrible time to draw me to him into a covenant relationship with him, then love has won already. I never felt loved because I never fully accepted his love for me. It sounded nice, but I didn't feel qualified to fully have that kind of love. Now that I know I am so loved by him, that is more than enough for me. I am complete in him. My worth and value and identity is found in him. Not in my husband or any other person. The love of my husband is just a sweet bonus. Comment. This sounds to me like brainwashed bull crap. It's like suddenly you are in a cult, chanting words other people have told you to say because you think it's easier to follow what someone else tells you to do and think, rather than to do the actual work on fixing your issue, seeking your self-worth and men. I am sorry for what you have gone through in your past, and I really hope you are able to work with a better therapist to resolve things. You can try to convince yourself that God fixes things, but he doesn't. The reality is that you are the only one who can fix you, and unless you work to change your behavior and your mindset, you will fall right back in with the next man who shows you a little attention. OP responds, That is an unfair assessment. You do not know the work, the private work I have put in and am putting in. My counselor is a licensed therapist and knows more about me and my issues than any of you here. I do not have to tell all to any of you. My relationship with God isn't for show or to charm anyone. You want truth. I was about to kill myself underneath the very same tree STBX and I took our family pictures under. I had the shard of glass in my hand ready to slit my wrist because I could not deal with the shame and pain of what I had caused with my choices. I could not deal with the pain I had caused my husband and children and thought everyone would be better off without me. I was about to carry out the legacy of my family. My grandfather committed suicide and then his son, my daddy, did as well. God used my ex-husband's new wife to speak life and hope into me while I was under that tree. That evening I cried out to God to save me from myself. That's when my personal healing began. You have no idea where I've been. The traumatic events in my life that I have lived through or the heartbeat of who I am. You don't see the tears I'm crying this very second that are dripping onto my cell phone as I type this. You don't know me. That's okay though. I'm not after your approval or anyone's approval. I care more about the beauty that is found in who I am than I do about outward beauty. Contrary to what you and others may believe, I really am a great person that loves her family immensely. Those who really know me would tell you that I am sweet and it's genuine. It's because I am. I am not a snobby, haughty person at all and I have never been. I'm okay playing second fiddle. You must believe I am a B2 because I made mistakes in physical nature. You want more truth. I'm 41 years old and have only had slept with three people in my whole life. Two of which were my husband. Is any of this your business though? Why is it your business to decide whether or not I am truly leaning on Jesus? Were you here tonight when I prayed and poured my heart out to him? Nobody was. Does that mean it didn't happen? I have always loved STBX. He even put in his post that I have always been so loving and devoted. You cannot act like that for 10 years. It is real. Even now he still says he knows that I love him. I do. I didn't screw up because I didn't love him. I screwed up because I liked the attention I was getting. I wanted that type of attention from my husband. I was harboring resentment towards him, but I never stopped loving him. I made bad decisions out of selfishness, self-pity, insecurity, and immaturity. I own it. I still love my husband with all of my heart though. Just because I am leaning on Jesus does not mean I am not doing any of the work myself. Do you not think everything is being addressed and I see? It all is. Issues are being actively dealt with. Like I said before, I don't share everything on here. I don't need to. Be assured that my IC is great and knows everything about me and we are weeding through all of it. Criticizing me for wanting to honor God with my life and for allowing him to work in my life as well though is not helpful. You aren't helping when you do that. God is most definitely the one helping me to have the courage to walk this out. His perfect love is alleviating my fears. Honestly, my walk with the Lord is my walk. In the same way, is my relationship with my husband. Two very personal relationships. I am already addressing my issues in therapy. I have a list of things we are tackling. 
1. Selfishness. 2. Insecurity. 3. Self-pity. 4. Immaturity. 5. Physically acting out. 6. Coping mechanisms. 7. Self-love. 8. Self-respect. 9. History of abuse, family or origin. 10. Past abuse experience. 11. Stress and inward pain. 12. Resentment issues. 13. People-pleasing. 14. Codependency. 15. Boundaries. I am a work in progress, but I am making progress. I am not afraid of the hard work. I accept I need it and I welcome it. The crazy thing about my list is all of those things we pinpointed are connected. It's a web of pain and issues that has entrapped me. We are knocking that sucker down though. I took some advice from one of the posters this week and did something hard for me to do. Once I did it, I texted my therapist to tell him. He replied, that is great, I am so proud of you. I feel like I have a great support system behind me now. I've weeded out friends and acquaintances that have not supported my journey, have spoken poorly of my husband, have tried to hook me up with someone already or have been a bad influence on me. I've been picky with my support team. I don't want to fail and I need good influences and tough love. Female mentors are totally cool with me and much welcome too. It was brought to my attention today that women on here have seemed to drop and I'm not sure why. Women who have been cheated on view a wayward woman as a threat or a trigger maybe. Women don't like other women. I really don't know. Honestly, I don't even know who is male or female around here, nor do I care. It's hard to tell based upon screen names and even posts. I'm not trying to make friends here anyway so I'm not researching anyone to figure out who you all are. I don't have time for that with the 19 kids we have anyway. Just to be totally clear and transparent here though, I didn't go seeking out help from a man. I also didn't even know he was a man in the beginning. Had he been a woman with the same advice and true desire to help me personally to recover and not bash or tear down and offer real help with what reconciliation looks like and can be, I'd be communicating with her too. My 99 is a male and I share things with him, but we certainly don't have the hots for each other and I don't find comfort in the fact that he is a man. And I chose him because he was covered by our insurance. He is a spirit-filled Christian and he was the only one to call me back after I called three other ICs. STBX as I see is a female. It just turned out that way. My best friend has just gone through infidelity with her husband. She is a wealth of information, experience and truth as well. They reconciled after being separated for six months. No kids. She has also been a wayward before and so knows both sides of this. She is authentic and honest and tells me what I don't want to hear, but totally believes that all people are capable of change and also believes in reconciliation because she is living in a healed marriage and they are happy and he has made changes. And I don't even like the guy so for me to say that is huge. He entered IC and they went to MC as well and they gave their hearts to Jesus. She is so thankful she chose to forgive and to save the marriage. My husband is free to ask for any information from me regarding anything. He doesn't communicate with me though in actual conversation. Only text and only in hugs and kisses. No words. Trust me, I would love to actually talk to him. In person. Face to face, heart to heart. When we are together, we talk, but I know to keep everything light. Now in person and in real life with my family and friends and with my IC, I hold nothing back. Open book. I'm not comfortable sharing private things about my recovery publicly though. Surely, that can be expected and respected as well. And P.S. I was not sleeping with anyone. I have not had slept with anyone other than my husband the entire 10-year marriage. My only two physical screw-ups happened nearly one year ago and although it was a dirty act, we did not have sleep together or come anywhere near that. I will never admit to something that absolutely did not ever happen. Three months later, an update about myself. I recently started working in the office for the church I lead worship for. I work four days a week from 9 to noon and get to take my two youngest, ages 4 and 3, with me to work. I also moved out of the house STBX and I had previously lived in together and leased a house in a different neighborhood on my own that is 550 less a month than what I was paying at the other house. It's plenty spacious for myself and our six kids. My kids are all doing really well and I've worked hard to provide them with stability and joy in the midst of this separation. They are carefree and adjusting just fine, although they miss daddy. I can fully provide for them no all by myself which is a necessity. My come to Jesus moment was not a fleeting moment by any means. I've only drawn closer and closer to the Lord during this time and have worked hard to get well and to recover. I was released by my therapist for my C a month or so ago. By the way, I switched to a female therapist and she did wonders for me. I still communicate via text with her here and there. I still receive pastoral counseling though and am becoming a better me every day. I'm proud of the woman I'm becoming. I've come so far and won't stop growing, learning and bettering myself for my own self and for the sake of my children. I have joy now, not just happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is something you have even in the midst of trials and hard times. It's a choice. I also have real peace and can now say it as well with my soul. My home is peaceful and filled with love. I've fallen in love with my children all over again. Before, I was very STBX focused and now my kids get all of my love and attention. They're pure sunshine in my life. STBX and I don't communicate often and he recently told me he doesn't love me. 
I didn't like hearing that, of course, but I needed to hear it, in a sense, to begin to detach and move forward. I'm okay though and fully trust God with my life and with the lives of my children. I went through the fire, but I'm determined to come out gold. I have a great group of Christian girlfriends now that encourage me and have been just what I needed during this time. I hate what I did and what happened to my marriage and will carry that scar for the rest of my life, but I am grateful for the mercy of God and how he is remaking and remolding me into something of value. The past few months have been eye-opening for me and I can say now and actually believe it, that I am of value and I know my worth. I told him that he can pursue me if he so chooses to make a move towards reconciliation. If there was a checklist of sorts of all the things a WS should do or be doing, I've hit every mark and then some. It's okay though, I've come to realize that I don't want to be with someone that doesn't want to be with me anyway. I can't make him love me. I can love me though and spend my days bettering myself and being a great mom to my kids. I don't need him, I just wanted him. But, I don't want him if he doesn't want me too. As far as my church and position goes, my pastor and the church know I was unfaithful to my husband. I confessed it to them publicly and was ready to step down. They showed me Jesus that day in a way I'd never expected. They embraced me, not my sin, but me. They said it took courage and humility to come clean like that and showed them my heart and that is exactly the kind of person they want leading worship. None of us are perfect. The church isn't a museum for the saints, but rather a hospital for the hurting and broken. I'm real. I have nothing to hide. I don't need to pretend to have it all together like some church leaders do, because I don't. Just because I have made poor choices doesn't mean I am no longer allowed to worship God with my music and voice or be allowed to bring others along with me into his presence. I'm forgiven. I'm repentant. I'm new. I was going weekly and still go to counseling with my pastor and his wife. The second therapist was so very helpful. Plus, I've read so many books and have thrown myself into recovery and into getting healthy. Those that know me are really proud of me. I chose to tackle myself and to find out what was wrong with me and I have dedicated these past six months to getting well. Spirit, soul and body. I am living a fulfilled life now and have zero desire or need for validation from a man. I have found who I am and have made peace with my past. My life is nothing like it's ever been before and I'm finding that being single and even being a single mom to six kids isn't the end of the world. In fact, I've discovered just how strong I am and what it truly means to trust God. Y'all, I drove the biggest moving truck they have all day on the day of our move and even backed it up into the two driveways. I'm learning you got to do what you got to do, so stop fearing and just conquer it. I was pretty proud of myself. I have fully and completely dealt with the deeper issues some have mentioned. I know my why. I know what was wrong with me and why my coping mechanism was a destructive one. The layers of the onion have been pulled all the way back and although it was terrifying and uncomfortable to dig into my past and even childhood, it was absolutely necessary. I had not faced my own issues my entire life. I hid from them and then justified them. I take full responsibility for my previous self. I'm not proud of that girl at all, but I have taken those experiences and losses and used them as a springboard for true change. I didn't even like myself before. I love myself now. The consequences of my choices have been more than painful, but I've accepted them now and chosen to learn from this and never go back. I am planting good things into my life and tending to what I've been given and finding a myriad of reasons to be grateful each day. I have a wonderful godly support team of friends and family, seven beautiful children the Lord entrusted to me, a great job, a great new home, and a future that looks brighter each day. I have offered and asked to pay penance to STBX in several ways, but he has made it clear to me that he is done. I do still love him though and care greatly about his well-being. I'm definitely not saying I've arrived, but I am certainly far from where I was and that is progress. I won't stop learning and growing and changing. For the first time, I am enjoying the process and choosing to find the beauty in it along the way. I've not lifted any boundaries I've put into place and don't plan on doing so. I'm living in the now, living a principled life and a disciplined life and not worrying or focusing on any particular outcome. That's in God's hands. He works all things together for good and whatever that is, I'm all for it. He knows best, not me. To set the record straight so some won't feel like they need to talk about the length of counseling, I was in IC for four months solid on a weekly basis. When I switched counselors, I was going twice a week. Then she released me from therapy because I was really doing so well. Then, something horrible happened between STBX and I and I started seeing my IC again to figure out how to break free from STBX for the health of myself and children. I saw her every other week after that and still communicate with her via text and phone calls when I need advice. She is the real deal. Our insurance was cancelled because STBX was terminated from his job, but I continued to pay my IC cash on a sliding scale fee basis so that I could continue talking to her as needed. The pastoral counseling I've been receiving has been constant for close to six months. I'm in no way saying I have it all together, because that would be comical. But, I have come so far and won't stop growing, learning, and changing. I'm proud of myself. Someone once told me that when I can look at myself in the mirror and be proud of the person staring back at me, that I'll know I'm getting better. I can do that now. There's hope all around me and it's not in the form of STBX either. 
I love that man tremendously, but he is not a healthy person for me right now and certainly not my focus. A month later. So, we have been separated seven months. He agreed up front to pay child support. He paid it twice. Then he was terminated from his job and has been broke the past five months. So, I finally contacted the Department of Family Services and an enforcement case has been initiated. However, he admitted to me that he was trying to get a waiter job to have instant cash and not avoid CS being deducted from his check. He now has two states after him for child support. I work now and solely support all six of my kids by myself and feel pretty proud of myself for it. I have moved into a new rental house with the kids and everything is in my name only now. I had no other choice. Sadly, I cannot depend upon him for a single thing. But, the fact that he is intentionally avoiding paying child support is wrong. I was just wondering how a child support amount would even be calculated with this type of waiter job. He has always been in restaurant management and made a very good salary and he is dumbing himself down to avoid child support. I filed taxes as head of household instead of married filing separately and claimed all of the kids. I knew any refund he would get would be intercepted by the state his first set of kids live in for back child support he has not paid. Things have not improved. On my end, I'm doing well still though. He is not consistent with anything and we cannot count on him to ever show up when he says he will or to be at our kids special school events or anything. He lives four miles down the road with his parents too and is unemployed, so I'm not sure what the excuse is. He still asks me for favors and to borrow money from me too. It's beyond ridiculous. He owes me months worth of child support and several hundred dollars in money he's borrowed from me for gas to get to soccer, rolling my eyes, and cigarettes. However, I'll never be paid back. I've accepted that. My friends and counselor are begging me to be done with him. He's showing his true colors and they cannot understand why I'd ever want reconciliation with him. His actions are hurtful. My comment, I am not sure was this a good ending or a bad ending. Do you think OP came out okay after all of this? Do you think she could have done more? Comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.